like and subscribe to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I like well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
That's just for the, the two races at Daytona for the um, for the 500 and the nationwide race. They're, the COPD 300. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to get Kurt Busch to drive for them in the in the uh, nationwide race. I don't think that's going to happen. But I mean, they kind of enjoyed parting ways when they parted ways last year, so I'm not kind of sure that's going to work this year or not. Hey, whatever's going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if it brings money, they'll do whatever it takes. I was saying Jimmy Johnson's going to be the uh, title favorite for next year. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm a little partial. So I'm saying look out for the 15th next year. This coming year. Especially when he's running on foot. <laughs> <laughs> 15. Who's yeah. running in the 15? Clint Look. Boyer. Running into the 15 and 20. And they've got and they've got a and they've got a pretty good um, front end guy for that team. So you know I think they're they're pretty good shape. Yeah. Heard about Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> Heard about Mayfield. That was. I don't understand. I understand the premise of what he was trying to do, but you know that's not. He's got other issues that he needs to worry about before he thinks about getting back in a race car right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, that's my. That's my philosophy and my thoughts. Well, what do you think about Kyle Busch? He's, he's saying he's liking the new generation car that Gibbs is putting out. He, and he thinks he's got something he can... Well, they all like the new generation car. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody that's drove one likes the new generation car. The Gen 6 car is a big hit. Now, you asked, you asked me earlier this week about what I found out about the wind tunnel. Yeah. The cars are exceptional in the wind tunnel. No limited amount of drag. The downforce is perfect. But, but now I what, didn't but get where they specific go? numbers. I didn't get any specific numbers. JJ going to get pissed at you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what's going to happen, though, when they get in? Are they trying to simulate any wind turbulence inside the tunnels at all? Yes. They do a little bit. I mean, it's not it's not going to be the same thing as you're going you're gonna to have at the racetrack. But it is very close. They, they move the car around. They... They, I mean, they do. I went to the wind tunnel with Phoenix last year, and they do a lot of that. And it's 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 very it's very good for what what it's used for. So uh, they're going. It's going. It's going to be really good, and we're going to see what it looks like in the draft because the front ends don't match up in the draft this year. Hmm. So be some. So they're going to have to. You're going to have to play. It's going to be more pack racing than. Well, then they then they're actually still going to be. Drafting off of each other yeah, it just won't be, won't be bump drafting. It won't be the bump drafting or the two car run away with everybody trying to run away with two cars. Yeah. That's not going to happen this year. It will happen maybe with two or three laps left in the race when they don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like it did last year. Yeah. So they don't run the new car in the shootout. Are they going to run the old car in the shootout? Run new car all the way through. All the way through. Okay. Now you were talking about Jeremy. Now Jeremy, they, they, the rumor is he's going to be considering a deal on the felony charges. Hmm. So maybe well, he'll go into witness protection on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where he. Well, I'm, I'll keep my mouth shut on that one because <laughs> I'm not sure where that goes because I think he's he's looking at some serious time if he if he don't come up with a plea bargain. Mm. Have you heard of Trevor's going, Trevor Baines going to be running full season in the Cup? No, not in the Cup. Still, but he's, he's still going to be doing. The, they're going to do the same schedule they did last year with the Wood Brothers, but Trevor's going to run the full season in Nationwide for Jack Roush in the six car. Okay. So Finch is up to running what eighteen Cup races now. From what I got, I got a press release from them today, and they're saying they're going to run the full season. Now, how, how much of that's going to be start and park? Because I really don't see James Finch. Who are they putting in the car? Out. Regan Smith is going to run the car at Daytona. Mm -hmm. Well, they got A.J. Dang AJ Dangers. On, yeah, he's going to run it at Phoenix. He's going to be in the car at Phoenix. And they're trying to get Kurt to drive the car in the Nationwide. In the Nationwide series. So Phoenix car. racing, Dinger's first race is going to be at Phoenix. In Phoenix. <laughs> and they're trying... There would be that bird out, rising out of the fire thing. <laughs> well, they were trying to figure they were trying to figure out a way to get a car for him for the shootout because he's eligible to run the shootout. And but he's I don't think Finch is going to put a bring a special car down for the thing. 
Yeah, yeah. It's no longer the Budweiser shoot has a Sprint Unlimited. At yeah, Daytona. they changed. The, yeah, they changed the name. Kind of. And they put Budweiser duels on the Thursdays. That's what I just read. And Direct TV is not doing the hot pass again. The hot pass this year, and I hate that because I enjoyed that. Yeah. There you go, the plea deal. Yep. When is it? He's, he they got it put off for temporarily, but I'm not sure when he goes back to court for that. But I mean, I didn't know that he had had stuff found on his property until I read that earlier. That Red Bull Racing had. I mean, he had some stuff from Red Bull Racing. Yep, Red Bull was one of them. And yep. you know, they had reported it stolen, and they found it on his property. So. That doesn't look good. I mean, mm-hmm. Red Bull racing signs, tools, and furniture. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where in the world. Hey, who knows? Maybe they had a party over there and left it all there, you know? Hey. Well, it'll be in. No one, yeah, they probably been one of those <laughs> parties that he likes to have, I guess. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sprint's going to sponsor the shootout, you know that. And going to be named the unlimited the sprint unlimited yep you were talking about scott speed earlier he posted that uh levine family racing's 2013 schedule 24 races including the budweiser duels and our all-star shootout he made every race he attempted last year but one i didn't know i didn't realize yep. that until i looked back out on it during the week hmm. so he he's got a i mean he does, he does pretty good in five on Oh, we're having spotter change-ups around there, too. There's a whole bunch of those. A whole bunch of those being changed. Nobody called for me yet. Nobody <laughs> called me either. I wish somebody called me. I'd love to do it for them. But a, a friend of mine is going to be spotting for Martin Truex this year, uh, Mike Herman Jr. Yeah. He's going to be spotting for Truex this year. He got a new job up there, and there's other people have kind of shifted around. Yeah, because we actually have a couple of those guys called up on the show. But I keep forgetting to call Joey Meyer. Oh, yeah. Get him back on here. I ain't had him on here in a while. I just realized something. Oh, well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got a friend of mine. If, if she gets lined up in Nationwide, she wants me to go out and spot. So. That's fun. Fun, fun, fun. Mark Martin's birthday is today. <laughs> How old is he? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So what else has happened? Uh, Clint Boyer running the 24 hours of Daytona. Shane Mill returns to a stock car. Uh, got some. Yeah, we got the, the, the 24 hours, the 24 hour race. He's running with uh, Michael Walter yeah, Clint Boyer. and Rob Kaufman. And first time he's ever been in a tournament in one of those cars. What's he running? He's running the Ferrari. Grand, yeah, he's running the Grand. The, what is it? The Grand American the part of the Grand yeah. or something like that. For yeah. That. He ain't one of the big cars. One of them. And I don't know if you heard this. Um, Allgaier is back with the motor, Turner Motorsports, which now has a new owner involved in with them now. Hmm. Uh, it's now called uh, Smith or Turner Smith Motorsports. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to miss the I Get It A Lot show tonight because that starts at 8 tonight. What's that? The one where Jeff Gordon's supposed to be on. Oh, 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 oh. I yes. get that a lot. You didn't set the DVR? Huh? You didn't set the DVR? No, I don't, ever, I don't even worry about it anymore. It's just... I set mine for Moonshot or so. <laughs> <laughs> that Duck Dynasty? <laughs> well, Duck Dynasty doesn't come back till next week, so... But all guys got him a new crew chief because uh, Scott Zibadelli left RAB racing to go over there, and, and Jimmy Edwards doesn't have a job right now. Hmm. So, I don't know where he'll end up being when the season starts. And we got Denny's going to be with Joe Gibbs for a multi-year deal. Same, same situation there. Guys, Darren and back with him. Yep. There'll be a team. There'll be a team to. I think they'll be good. And hopefully move along pretty good next year too. I really mm-hmm. do. And of course, we're gonna hear something from him in a little bit. Ryan Kozlowski, number ninety-two. That's gonna be a Toyota. 
And yep. I, was, yeah. I was there last. I was there in 2011 at Daytona when he finished fifth in the race at Daytona. You ready? You're up. Yeah. Let's talk racing. Hi, this is Elizabeth Richardson. This is Elizabeth, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. You got Jason Langley, this is Roger, and we also have, oh God, what's his name? <laughs> Jack Dotson. <laughs> Jack Dotson. I, I like giving Jack a hard time over there. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, I'm 15. I'm from Justin, Texas. I've been racing for eight years, coming up on my ninth. And this will be my first year racing sprint cars. Okay. Uh, what size sprint cars? 305. 305s. What number are you going to be? 13. So you had a special <laughs> spot in your heart, or is that something just you always had that? I played soccer for a long time, and 13 was always my number, so it brought me good luck. Lightning Liz, huh? <laughs> Where'd you get that name? A truck announcer a few years ago. He said that I would just show up in the corners passing people, and that's how he got it. Good deal. So, have you? Ha uh, where have you been racing at? What are some of the tracks you've raced at? Um, I mean, go kart. I've been racing uh, mostly at Cam Cartway in Rome, Texas. Um, I've been to English Creek Speedway up in Knoxville, Iowa, and um, Cowtown, the kart track at Cowtown. I've raced at Kennedale Speedway once, so mostly so you, local tracks. So you got a lot of experience for a 15-year-old as far as being in one of those cars. <laughs> eight, eight years, yeah. That's, 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 a, that's pretty good experience for what are your future plans? What are you What are you looking forward to doing that next? Um, I'm looking to continue with sprint cars up until up into the world of outlaws. Mm. Mm. I see you. Have, I see you. I see on your bio that you like one time you you uh, you're looking forward to trying to go to Knoxville in in 2014. Yeah, I went up there and just watching the racing just made me want to do it so bad. So. That's my goal. Have you had anybody that's been helping you? Any anybody in the sprint car ranks that's helped you out, or? Um, not not yet. But we're working on that. Okay. Yeah. What do you got? What uh, with all the racing you're running around on, are you got a favorite track you like the best? Um, definitely Cam Carway. I that's my home track, so. My favorite place to be. Now, uh, the, granted, this is your first time being on the show. Usually, I, I try to catch us in the beginning so we don't get jumping around so much. Go ahead and give us your racing bio. You know when you started, the things you've already been doing, and then lead up to what uh, what your current sponsors and everything else you're doing for now. Okay, I started racing cars in 2008. Horsepower rig, and I raced that in 2005. And I raced those for about two years, and then I moved up to a six and a half horsepower. And I ran those for about a year. But moving up into the animal class, and that's I went to the KT100, racing those was pretty interesting, it was something new that we decided to try down at Cam Cartway and it just kind of took out for a little bit, then it kind of died down. After that we moved up to the 250cc horse stroke, which we've been racing for three years since 2009, and we just sold that car actually in October and that's when we bought a shrimp car. Good deal. So uh, who in your family got you into racing? Anybody in particular? Or? Yeah, my grandfather. He raced stock cars up in Maryland. Yeah. And then my mom 
Right. And I was seven, I said no, but then she got me started, I couldn't stop. All right, I got a tech question for you. Because I'm a novice with sprint cars. What's the difference between a 305 and a 410 sprint car? Oh, 400 horsepower. Okay, that's what. <laughs> Hoops of horses under the. There lid? you go. I, see, I, 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 that's something I didn't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I haven't, I haven't followed sprints that much. I mean, that, that's a lot going from a 3.5 horsepower engine up to what about 425 horse? I think the 305 will get you. Yeah, that's one point right. And then the 410 is even worse than that, so. Yeah, they're up around what seven, eight, about eight hundred horse out of the four ten, aren't they? Oh, that's even better. Even better. So, what part? You say you live in uh, in Texas? Yeah, more Texas. What do you What do you think about living down in Texas? After uh, you have traveled out of state, right? Yeah, we. Been out of state a couple of times, but not a lot. To some of the other tracks, or? Sorry? Would you been to other tracks out of state, or you just been? Um, I raced at the Tulsa Shootout twice when they had carts, and I've been up to English Creek and Knoxville twice. Cool. Um. What are some of the other things you like to do when you're not racing? Uh, I play tennis, and I tennis. play the flute, and I enjoy hanging with my friends, going to races, and I have a horse that I take care of. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I remember seeing. I remember seeing the pictures on that one. <laughs> so you, you you juggling school, racing, take care of horse. You got it all going on. Yeah, it's busy. Wow. What, uh, so how do the kids at school feel about it? Some of them are really supportive about it. They'll ask me week to week, how did you do? How did you do? And others just, you know, kind of, they don't get it. <laughs> you don't get it. Do, do you got some of the people in school that gives you a hand, or do you already have other people that already been in the racing business a while and giving you a hand? Um, Someone that I race with actually goes to my school, and every once in a while I'll have them come over and help me with anything, or I'll go over there and help them. Cool. Who who have you looked up to in the in the racing world that that uh, has given you something to aim for? Um, let me pull about that and. Joey Saldana. Who do you say? Joey Saldana? Yeah. Oh, Joey. Okay. Uh, what, uh, all right. What, to, here's a good question for you. What has been your most embarrassing moment in your racing career? I was getting out of my car after I just won a race. In getting out, I tripped over my bar, sidebar, and I face planted. Oh boy! <laughs> Everybody, give you a standing up uh, 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 ovation. 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 There we go. Something like that. It's one of them days. So, when's your next race? Um, the car car season doesn't start until March around here, but we're hoping to get some practice in. Out February. Mm -hmm. So, the plan is to be ready to race whenever the gates open for the spring series. Are you missing? Are you, are, are you missing a chance to go see the, the Chili Bowl this year? Would you like to be at the Chili Bowl? I went last year, and I'm not sure if I'm going to go this year. I'd like to go, but I don't know if I can. Yeah, I have a couple friends racing up there this year, so I would really love to go up there and see them. Very good. So does your uh, family help out with your racing? My parents are my crew. Your parents are your crew. 
Have you had a chance to um, drive that um, 305 yet, or are you just you just waiting waiting to go? Not yet. We don't actually have an engine for it. We're working on that right now. Okay. You got any sponsors lined up for that car? Or? No, not yet. We're working towards that. Who's been your sponsors in the past years? My parents. Your parents. Your parents. <laughs> Mom and Pa <Pa's> money. <laughs> we all been there. Mom and Dad are sponsors and crew. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. well, I wish I had that when I was running. <laughs> all this stuff came out of my pocket. And whoever I landed for some sponsors. Well, so, not who yet. Do, do what? Not yet. Oh, who else do you do you look up to in in the racing in the racing world, like in NASCAR or something like that, or, or is that something you're not really into? Oh, I watch as much NASCAR as I can. Definitely Denny Hamlin. Okay, well, well, he's one of our he's one of our local guys here. So he's a uh, he, he's had a few crashes at Langley. He's actually got a thing called the Wall Award. He got knocked out with him and Paul Lubno. Ooh. Got in a crash. And uh, sort of carried the boy off in a stretcher. You ever had any, any bad hits hits like that yet? Um, in 2009, I crashed head on into a concrete wall. Mm. And I take it you lost? I'm sorry? I take it you lost? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How'd the car fare out? This has been actual and some body damage. Well, that's not too bad for hitting head on the wall. Yeah. Last time I checked, it usually shortens it up a foot or two when you do something like that. And it hurts. Yeah, just a wee bit. <laughs> I, I, I'll have to show you uh, if I can find it a video again about it was a guy that was in a dirt car. In a sprint and uh, hit hit the wall and it careened him up into the catch wires, and the catch stuck. bench up up above and the the big tires on the back got entwined up in the fence, and the car was hanging up off the ground by about ten feet. Mm. Wow, that would not be a good experience. And and it was hanging like upside down, so trying to get the guy out was really interesting. Well, that must have been a ride. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What else? What else do you like to do? Well, I'm waiting for the tennis season to get started. Up. That should start up in about a month. Um, food competition coming up in two or three weeks. Just it's been raining a lot here, so definitely gonna have to take care of the horse more now that she's all dirty and wet. Oh. oh, that sounds like ever so much fun. Yeah. So you ride Western or English or? Western. Western, yeah. I think down in She's Texas. In Texas. Come uh, on now. I, I just wanted to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Did you only pay a quarter for your horse or? No. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Have you ever met some of the NASCAR drivers that come from Texas? I have not. We actually live really close to TMS. But we don't get to go out there a lot. Yeah, too much traffic. Too much traffic. <laughs> uh, yeah, like one of my friends uh, runs Nationwide. He lives down there, Robert Richardson. Yeah. He, he's a good old boy. You have to snag up with him sometime. Definitely. <laughs> Anything else you who you got out there you want to thank? Um... Mike Melton, Justin Melton, and Michelle for helping me get my car together. My parents for supporting everything. And Cole, Michelle, and Tyler Beachfield. The same. And that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Well, well, thank you for being on the show uh, tonight. Uh, wish you good luck in the upcoming season, and uh, we'll make sure to have you on later on in the season. Thank you for having me. All right, have a good night now. Bye. 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 So the, the younger ones, 
and I hate you gotta draw it and yeah. now they haven't gotten the she hasn't gotten the art of gab yet I mean, she hasn't been on the she hasn't gotten to that big I mean, she's still running the local stuff and mm. she hasn't gotten to she'll get there yeah it'll, be, it'll yeah. come that's real five okay. she'll open her eyes I really didn't know the difference right. between three or five and fourteen. I was, I mean, I kind of read up on it today, but I mean, yeah, it's basically going to be the engine sizes. And I did just like two eighty three, three twenty seven, three fifty five. And I, I've watched sprint car races on TV, but I've never really, you know, I've never really got interested in them well, next, on, a reg, on a regular basis. Next time Terry's in town, I'll have to, I'll have to get you over here. And I, I did go to the World of Outlaws race in Charlotte. One yeah. time before one of the big races in Charlotte, we went down there for that, and that was kind of interesting. But I mean, I you know I didn't know a whole lot about what what was going on there as far as my first uh, one with the dirt guys uh, as far as the sprint cars go was going to the Knoxville Nationals this past year, and Terry was out there running in that. Oh man! So they that that's some big tough. <laughs> They were running the 410, so that was the larger ones out there. And those guys will get out there. Sammy Swindell. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, the Kenzer boys. Kenzer. Um, and... I'd have to pull it up. The, all the names. In fact, I've got we've got a a banner that we did up and got a bunch of the drivers assigned that we're going to auction off. And uh, there's a, a charity out there that works with drivers that get injured. Mm-hmm. Um trying to remember the guy's name Steve something oh poop but uh, yeah we're going to auction that off on eBay and hopefully drum up some good money for him anywho looks like I need to rattle some cages here waiting on a Brian Keselowski call huh yeah Brian he's probably probably tied up trying to work on that car getting that ready for Daytona or Bob's talking to him. <laughs> I don't. This, I, I, I see where he's going to have. He's got some developmental drivers he's going to have with him this year too. Hmm. Yeah, they they were working with another race team and uh, were going to be running the ARCA race for getting them qualified. Hmm. So, let's see how it goes. Brian's ran about 36 ARCA races in his career. Well. Ran two last year. Well, the Keselowski family mm-hmm. is yeah. big in ARCA racing. And big in the area they came from up there with the, the Michigan area with the local tracks and stuff up there. I've, I've heard about them for years. Them and the Venturinis. That's oh, all yeah. you hear about when you talk about ARCA racing. Yeah, well, Kimmel too. Yeah. The, uh, what was it, um, a friend of mine was uh, went to the Glen to go race one of the uh, nationwide races about two years ago. Was going to run one of the Brian's nationwide cars up there. Got up there, got ready, and went out practicing. Came back in, and they'd forgotten to put uh, they had speedway brakes on it. Ooh, on a road course, and they didn't have a spare set. <laughs> So he got about eight or ten laps in out there and had to quit because there wasn't no brake left. Mm. Oh. That's not good. Mm-mm. Nah. But I was I was I was in Daytona when he when he finished fifth in that qualifying race for the Daytona 500. He, he finished fifth, started twelfth in the 500, mm-hmm. and I think he even pushed Brad. Yeah, he did most of the race. Pushed Brad most of the race. Oh, they worked together quite a bit. And. That was a that was a big deal for him at the time. I heard that was one of the oldest cars that. It, well, a lot of the a lot of their cars uh-huh. uh, were, were were the older cars compared to everybody else. Right. But once Brad got hooked on with Penske, he began to get some of the the Dodge parts mm-hmm. from Penske. Well, they said they wanted to try to switch over to Ford. Then that's that's probably if, the same right. reason why. Yeah. So, with Penske going to forward, that would that would make sense Ryan. to have. It's Roger. <laughs> they put you on hold and switch over to the main line. I was sending you a text. I didn't know what happened to you. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know how it is. Hang on a sec. All right. Push the line that's flashing and the push speaker. Let's talk racing. Hello, Brian. Hey, what's going on, guys? Brian. You got Jason Langley and... <laughs> hey. I'm Jack Dotson, in case you didn't know. What's that now? He, he, he didn't know who my name was. Then I'm just telling you who I was. Oh, Jack, okay. You got Jack Dotson and Jason Langley and myself. All right. Well, I appreciate you having me on, guys. Well, it's nice to hear your voice again. I missed having you on here for a while. Yeah, yeah, I've been kind of out of uh, out of the limelight for a little while, which is probably an okay thing right now. Uh, just trying to get some stuff put together so we can go racing. Uh, we're uh, working on a lot of different things, but uh, hopefully uh, get something together to run the Daytona 500. Good deal. So tell me, uh, what have you got set up for your sponsorship set up that you're going to do for Daytona? Well, we got a lot of different stuff we're working on. Um, we, we've had actually some uh, phone calls today about some stuff that uh, were for more of the primary sponsorship stuff, so that sounds good. And, uh, you know, we, we've definitely got some interest, so that's always a good thing. And uh, and a lot of little, bit, little like, associate sponsors and, and stuff like that, so... Uh, we also have a fan deal where uh, people can pay $30 of their name on the side of the car for the race. So that's actually taken off really well and, and exceeded where we thought it would be. So that's uh, that's worked out pretty well so far. And, um, you know, we uh, I've got some equipment that I've sold at the shop and looking at maybe selling a little bit more. But uh, trying to put together whatever I can to go out there and run that race. Uh, that's, that's a race I feel like we got a chance to, to make and uh, got a chance to run well at. So... Hopefully we uh, we get a little bit more sponsorship stuff pulling through. We definitely have to have a primary sponsor to be able to do it. So uh, we get this put together. Well, hopefully we can go out there and show what we got. I was there in 2011 when you you and Brad ran in the dual race prior to the Daytona 500. That had to be the highlight for you, push, you and him pushing each other back and forth for the for the big race, the the, the dual race really? to get into 500. Absolutely. It, uh, that, I would have never dreamed in a million years that would have worked out the way it did, that's for sure. And uh, a lot of things had to happen to make that all kind of line up. But, uh, you know, it, it did, and, and I think he didn't realize how good that would work either, you know. So, I mean, it was kind of uh, mutually beneficial on, our, on both of our parts there. It, uh, it took a car for, for me that was running, you know, about the tail end of mid-pack at best, and uh, got a good person behind it that knew how to push, and it took a mid-pack car for him. He was running 10th when he got spun out, and uh, you know it took a mid-pack car for him and had a shot at actually going up to the front. And we ended up finishing uh, fifth and I think seventh. We had a car on the outside of us there that split us, but uh, so we uh, got all the way up to the front there, and that worked out really well. There was there was plenty of times where he could have uh, ducked off and got with somebody else that. Probably would have been faster, but it didn't seem like a faster car was the way to go. The car that was slower actually ended up working out well for him because it uh, didn't have a lot of separation and didn't pull away from each other. And I didn't have to drag the brakes much because that Penske motor was pushing right through my trunk. So it uh, it worked really well. All right, the, the car that you've got right now is a Toyota, and I, I saw somewhere that you, you would like, you, you may try to go to a Ford. Mm -hmm. Would that be because of the Penske thing to help? Push the pit to help you with the Pinsky situation with Brad? No, not really. Um, honestly, I, I kind of run my operation as a whole separate deal. It actually is a Pinsky chassis that I have, but it's a, a few year old car. Uh, with Daytona, it's not really a big deal as far as uh, the car being old or anything. It's mostly just the body and engine holder there. But uh, with um, with the way the rules package and everything is, and with the new EFI systems, the reason I was looking at the Toyota stuff is because of the cost of the engine. There's a couple different engine manufacturers out there, uh, you know, engine builders that I could work with that, that could make that a little bit cheaper on me. I talked to the Ford guys and, you know, they, they want a lot of money, but they're doing a lot of high-end cars right now too, so that works out with them. But um, obviously I'd like to run the Ford package because I've dealt with them guys a little bit and I, and I feel like they would work with me the most um, they've, you know, they, they have a lot of offers that they can, uh, they can give their teams with, uh, pull down rate time and stuff like that. That's, that's free to their four teams. So, um, you know, I felt like that would be a, a big benefit to me, but the cost of the engines is just kind of, you know, my stopping point with that. So, um, 
Yeah, at this moment, we're looking at doing the Toyota deal, and uh, hopefully something will happen from there. And if we get that to work out, then uh, then we can go out and maybe do a few more races after that. All right, with your money situation that you you know you're you're trying to put everything together, will you have any chance to to test that car before you go to back to Daytona for the 500? Or um, no, pretty much not. I mean, we the, the the way that I have been explained to how a lot of things are going with the new body and everything, I've been told to kind of hold off a little bit on on some of the uh, uh, of getting the body put on the car, mostly until after this Daytona test that's coming up in the next couple of days. Um, some of the rules kind of have been still floating around, and some things are are going to change here and there. And as a small team, I can't afford to be fixing my car after I already built a brand new car, you know? So I want to make sure that they have all the rules locked in place before we mount the body onto the car, and we do it the right the first time. That way we don't have to keep redoing things. So um, so I've got a couple different body persons that we're working with that, that put bodies on cars, and um, one of them is actually doing uh, a few of the teams that are going to be down there for the test. So I get to have a little bit of that knowledge of what's going on down there through him. So that helps out a lot. Um, you know, we, we don't put our own bodies on our cars mostly because the uh, the templates are so expensive. So uh, this whole new template system is, is definitely expensive. Uh, everything is new about it, so there's no, you know, um, washover from last year's car to this year's car, even with the template stuff. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going on there. So hopefully uh, by the end of this weekend, We'll have a good idea of where we're going to be with the, the rules package, and we'll start putting the body on a car from there. All right, with the with the with the new Gen Six car that, that's out now, mm -hmm. what is what is your what is your opinion of the things that have changed from last year's car to this this year's car that's going to be good or bad for that you see? Well, um, the, obviously the aesthetics of the car are quite a bit different. Um, I, I'm. I, I still have to look at this car more to be completely sold on the look of it. Uh, obviously, what people are seeing just from, you know, camera shots and not being up next to the car, people, you know, fans of the, of the series that were running in it, they, they'll like the looks of the car a lot more. But as a racer, I'm still not completely sold on it just yet. But, um, you know, it definitely looks like, to me, it looks more like an IROC car than it ever has before. It, just the body lines of it, if you... You've seen any of the old IROC cars, mm -hmm. the old uh, Avengers that they used to run in IROC. Those things look a lot similar. Uh, the old Trans Ams and the Avengers. So it's um, it's different, that's for sure. But uh, I would say probably that as a racer, the biggest change is the weight rule. Uh, we're losing 150 pounds total off the car and 100 pounds off the right side. So that this is the lightest car we've ever run in Cup in, in maybe forever. So that... Um, it's a whole different rules package when it comes to that. It'll definitely change though with the handling and the characteristics of the car, especially in a long run, because you're not going to be as hard on the tires. So mm -hmm. the car should be faster for a longer period of time. So, um, and watching the Charlotte test, I did go to the Charlotte test and watch down there quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Man, those cars were fast and they, and they were breaking track records in practice, you know. So I only assume they're just going to get keep getting quicker. You know, these guys don't slow down because of anything. They're just going to keep getting faster. So they look like they drive really well, um, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's true. And we'll get out there and go racing and, and put on a good show. Well, one of the conversations we had before you came on, or well, earlier tonight, was how the front ends of these cars don't match up with the back ends of the other cars very well. What do you think we're going to see at Daytona as far as two car drafts? Pack drafting. What do you think we're going to see? Um, you're, you're going to see probably a little bit of everything. That's <laughs> 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 probably not the answer you're looking for, but uh, I would think the guys that can figure out how to push and line up the best, they'll use it to their advantage when the time comes. So probably the last couple laps. Um, you're never probably going to see the same pack racing that we used to have with the old car. Um, you know, back in the 2000 to 2005 range. It just, this car is too big, and the way the air moves around, it just breaks too big a hole in the car, in the air, and the cars just drive different. And every time when we slick the car up, that's when they, they didn't draft very well. So, you know, you would line up in the draft, and everybody would kind of just sit there, 
Well, now these cars draft like the, the trucks do. They mm -hmm. poke a big hole in the air, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you can suck up my guy really fast, and there's a lot of movement. So you're never always going to see the old-style way of doing things. But, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a mixture of both, I would think. Well, from what I've seen, and I was at the day, I was at the Charlotte test, too. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen is the car, with the cars are going, it's going to be hard for them to hook up like that to, to do the two-car drafts. And, and are the op the openings are they any more are the openings bigger now than they were in the front end in the with the last year's car? From the rules package, from what I can see, the opening for Daytona until day has not changed. The only thing that's changed on it is the location of the opening. Um, we we've lowered the opening location a little bit. Now it's kind of a little bit below the bumper where it was pretty close to the the top of the bumper or the middle of it. So it, they've lowered that down. It's probably not really going to change a whole lot of anything as far as, you know, whether it's going to suck up or not. But uh, it is going to change a little bit of the cooling characteristics of the car. But as far as the overall size of the grill opening, it looks to be about the same. We still have the same radiator rules that we had last year. So uh, you can only have a two-gallon radiator, which, you know, anything in front of the engine can only hold, hold two gallons of water. Um, the reservoir tanks that we use for our closed-loop system... They can only add a half a gallon reservoir claim coming. We were getting to the point where we were putting five or six gallons of water in these cars, and now we're down to about three. So mm -hmm. that's a big difference right there, just the amount of water that we have in our systems. But um, most all the other rules on that kind of stuff, the mechanical stuff, is all stayed the same. But uh, some cars are going to draft well with others, and some cars aren't. It looks to me that the Fords are going to have a tough time pushing because the location of the grill on their cars is kind of not conducive to matching up to the rear bumper, as the Toyota might be a little closer being able to push. So, uh, but you'll find that there's going to be some cars that are going to be able to push. Maybe the Chevy's pretty similar to the Toyota. So those cars will probably be able to push better than the Fords or, well, I guess that's it. You know, there's no more Dodges. So, um, so if there was a Dodge, I would think the Dodge would be pretty difficult to push with also. But, uh, at this point, I would say the Fords look like they're, they, uh, they're going to be a good lead car. What, you going to be down there to watch any of that Daytona testing? Uh, well, not. Actually, uh, I've been working for the Richard Petty Driving Experience here for the last, uh, well, since May of last year. So, oh. um, well, i actually full-time working there now, and uh, we have a track run this weekend at, at Charlotte, so we're going to be running there. And uh, I'm going to hopefully get all my information from my body guys while they're down there. So it's uh, it's kind of boring going down there for testing. So right. Unless I'm doing it, I don't want to just sit there and watch. So I I'm not the best fan in the world just to sit there and watch everybody else get to do this, you know. So uh, I struggle with going to racetracks and not being in a race car. So what kind of things do you think they're going to be looking at well, at Daytona this week as far as the different things they're going to try to look to change or that NASCAR is going to look at to implement before you go back, before they go back into the Daytona 500? Well, um, definitely the rules package with the radiator, um, probably the spoiler size. And, um, and, you know, just, um, different characteristics of the car like that. Uh, the, the spring and shock package has been pretty much the same package that we've used there for the last, I don't know, three or four years at least. So I would say we're probably not changing much of that. But, um, I would definitely say the restrictor plate size would be, you know, in effect there. I, I think we're running the same restrictor plate we've run there last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on how the cars suck up and they pass, um, that, that'll kind of change the way that uh, the cars drive too. So um, they're they're kind of on a kick of allowing us to have a little more power, which is great because I love to have more power. So uh, hopefully it all works out, and we'll see how the test goes. Uh, testing isn't always conducive to how the racing is going to be, though. I went down there for the Daytona tire test at the end of 2000, uh, 2010, and uh, when they freshly paved the track, and we went down there and we ran in packs like we always had you know, for 10, 15 years there, and we ran in three or four wide packs. And then we come down for the race, and everybody's doing the two-car draft. So, you know, it's, it's not conducive to exactly what's going to happen. So we'll see how it all works out. Good deal. Um, lost my question. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about what you got going on as far as the ARCA and your um, your developmental thing. I, I know you got a couple drivers that I know you're, you're working with. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, we uh, we are definitely doing an ARCA deal with Matt Kershevsky. Uh It's actually, he owns his own his car, uh, his dad and him, and um, so Kershevsky Racing, but they uh, 
they have us kind of operating the car out of our, our shop and using some of our equipment there. And uh, my dad's crew chiefing it as of right now and um, trying to get things put together for them to be able to go down to Daytona and run well. So um, other than that, we're still working on getting our own car there. So uh, we got a couple drivers that have uh, went down there, and uh, Garrett Smithley went down there and tested for uh, for Kershiaskis and uh, did a great test and, and actually was pretty fast on the first day. And um, he's a guy that I work with there at Richard Petty Driving Experience and have known him for a little while. He's a pretty good kid, and, and he's looking to try to come up with enough sponsorship to go do it, too. So hopefully he does. He gets a chance to do this and uh, and go from there. But, um, you know, we're just trying to, to figure out our sponsorship package with everybody that we're trying to work with there. And, you know, we're more than willing to work with all the drivers and try to get them in the best car that we can and go to the racetrack and, and go run well and, you know, prove that uh, we can be up there in the front with all the other guys. All right, now. I heard about I heard about a, a possibility of having a party at your shop. I mean, what's the deal with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, we won't go into a whole lot of specifics on oh, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> we, I would love to do that. I'm still working on that. But uh, the way that the way that came up is back in the '80s and the early '90s. My dad used to have a, a Daytona party, and uh, it was always kind of an open house Daytona party. And our shop has always been kind of an open shop for anybody to come and kind of look at our stuff and do whatever we want, you know. So um, we, that's just been a, that's how I grew up, you know. So it's really weird to me when I moved out to North Carolina. Everybody like is trying to hide everything they can. It's just an odd thing to me, you know. So, um, so what I was thinking is, is we, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, we used to do these parties, and people loved it. And we used to have food and a little bit of beer, and you know, just old racing tapes and all sorts of stuff, and just get a chance for everybody to come in and see what's going on before the year starts. And that's what I'd like to do again. I'd like to reinstate that. So hopefully we come up with something. But uh, it, it looks good to doing it, but I haven't nailed it down just yet. Right, well, you go ahead and nail that down and let me know. I told Jim to let me know. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're shot down there. Anybody who's in the Mooresville, North Carolina area is invited to come. Uh, you know, just come down and see what we're doing and see what's happening. If you want to get a chance to look at an Arctic car and a cup car and you know, hopefully we'll have the cup car back and, and going together and, and uh, getting ready for Daytona at that time. And, you know, we're, uh, I, I like to get the chance to talk to people and, and kind of show them how things work and, you know, more of the real world type stuff. So with this fan car deal, how can we um, get in touch with you about that? Yeah, it's mostly on Facebook and Twitter. Uh -huh. um, and, and that's actually worked really well for us as far as, uh, you know, had a lot of fans that have contacted us through that. and our Facebook pages and, and our Twitter stuff and you know if, uh, if you want to get on there and, and either go on the Brian Kislowski Motorsports uh, Facebook page or the uh, or my personal page you know we're pretty much on there all the time and get with people uh, they can pay via PayPal or they can uh, pay via uh, mail so mm -hmm. it all works out pretty well um, so far so good on that and I, I, like I said we've actually exceeded what we thought we would get through that and uh, it just keeps getting better every day. So it's great that people are willing to do that. And, you know, hopefully uh, we keep that going and uh, we'll go from there. All right. I got one more question for you. This, this is sure. a, last year, Brad wins the championship. I saw you there at, in the victory lane. Tell us how you felt about all that. Oh, man, that was awesome. Yeah, we got a chance to go down there and, uh, and get in victory lane after the uh, championship at Homestead deal there. Man, that was just an awesome thing for my whole family and me and myself and, you know, just to, to be involved in, you know, and, and, and the whole experience. I mean, they, they really do a really great job there and, and, and doing that upright, you know. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought that he would have done that so fast. You know, I mean, he's only been in it for three years, really. And, um, you know, winning races and championships and uh, I'm not going to say he made it look easy by any means, but, uh, you know, it just happened really fast, and that, that's a pretty cool deal. And, you know, that team has been working together for three years now. That's actually originally Brad's Nationwide Series team from uh, 2010 that won the championship there. And, um, you know, they moved all our core members up to the two-car when Brad moved to the two-car last year. And I think it showed, you know. And Paul Wolf's a, a great crew chief and knows these race cars, knows how to drive race cars. He's He's driven before. Um, you know, Paul's a great guy, and, and he, you that's know, anytime awesome. we ask him questions, he's more than willing to help us out. That's awesome, and, you know, he doesn't have to do that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool deal, and I love being around it and, you know, the whole thing. So uh, hopefully we'll 
hopefully someday I get a chance to do that myself. And yeah, we hope you do too. I mean, cause okay. that was a big deal. I'll give you a little bit about uh, something about me. My son was with Brad was was with Phoenix Racing when Brad won his first race at Talladega in the Cup car. Yeah. So I got I got Brad Keselowski stuff all over my living room. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I'll never forget that day either. I had just got home from from the Nationwide race at Talladega. And I walked in the door and seen the last two laps and watched everybody start fly through the catch fence. And me and my mom are standing up in the living room watching that and, and uh, worried about that. And then I'm like, hey, Ma, I think he just won this thing. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? I'm pretty sure he just won this race. <laughs> but, and we couldn't believe that that just happened, you know. So it was, uh, it was definitely a neat experience. That was really a good experience for me, too. I, cause I, I, I went crazy. Because that was my son's first week ever on a traveling road, uh, road team. <laughs> so that was a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, we, we thank you for being on the show tonight. Uh, you got any sponsors you want to thank? And uh, we'll catch you on the next go around. Yeah, uh, right now we're, we're still finalizing up a few sponsors. So right now I just appreciate everybody that, that has joined us on the uh, fan sponsors. And uh, hopefully we, we can drum up a few more. and. So far, it's looking really good, and uh, hopefully we have something more to announce here in the next week. Okay, Brian, we won't tell nobody. You can tell us. We won't tell nobody. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get them signed first before we do anything. <laughs> All right, Brian, you have a good night. Talk to you later, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker button. Now hit the flashing one. Flash again. Button. Taylor. Taylor. Yep. Oh, good. I can, I can work technology. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to train him how to use a phone now. He's played around with race cars. Now we're teaching him how to use a phone. Uh. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, what what you're into? Uh oh. Just still there. Should be. What am I into? Yeah. What what are what are your what, what is going on for the this year and what you've been into in the past? Um. Well, I started off racing in quarter midgets when I was about six or seven years old and I did that for about five years and while in the mix of while I was doing that I did bandoleros for a year and we just kind of figured out that bandoleros I'm from Michigan so there's not really a lot of bandolero racing in Michigan so we had to travel to Kentucky every weekend to do that so we did that for about a year and we said all right that's enough and I got into the 600 cc micro spins when I was about 10 and I did that until I was 13. And when I turned 13, I started to get into the USAC uh, Kenny Midget stuff. And then I did the USAC Ford Focus. And then that led on to the USAC Midget and front car stuff. And so now that's what I've been doing. Cool. What, uh, now, what's, what's your plans for later on in your racing career? Uh, well... I'm not so sure about later on, but for next year we have, I'm scheduled to do seven races with Unsherini Motorsport in the ARCA car, and uh, I plan on running the full USAC National Midget schedule as well as uh, all the USAC Silver Crown races, pavement races, all, and then some maybe some dirt races mixed in. But later on in my career, I just want to be racing for a living, and I hope to make it to the NASCAR series one day, if not the IRL. Good deal. So would you prefer more dirt or asphalt? Um, I like both. Uh -huh. it, it, you know what, honestly, it changes every now and then. One time it's dirt, one time it's pavement. Right now it's pavement because I'm kind of struggling on the dirt. Right. I always go back and forth. I like them both. So you're going to be running the Chili Bowl? Are you going to think about that? or? Yeah, I ran the Chili Bowl last night. I'm actually there right now. Good deal. How's the car? The car was really good. We had we had some really solid runs. We just got played with that Chili Bowl look. We were in a transfer spot to be in the A main, and the car right in front of me spun with nowhere to go. Uh, that kind of ended our day. So you, you going to be able to get in and buy another way? Uh, yeah, on Saturdays they go through the alphabet soup, we call it. Everybody, get, based on passing points and how you did on your preliminary night, they'll place you in a main on Saturday and you can race your way up to the feature, so that's what we're going to have to do. 
Well, tell us a little bit more about this signing with Venturini. I looked at your schedule that you're going to have with with Venturini. You're going to be running very. You're going to be running all kinds of different types of racetracks. Tell us how you feel about that. Yeah, I'm really excited just because I get to do some races in America, which I've only been dreaming about as a kid. I never thought I would make it this far, but um, I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to the years. The, all, the different tracks that we're running was since they finally lowered the age of 17 for Pocono and Kentucky. Um, I, can, I can run those two races, so we're racing those two races. But in order to do that, I have to have five events before that. So we had to throw in some other tracks like Alco, and I'm going to be racing at Toledo. So I think it's going to be cool and a big learning curve for me just to get over into the stock cars, first of all, period, and get used to the Arca car, and then go to all these different tracks. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, you were you were at Daytona for the ARCA test at Daytona, correct? Yeah, I was. And I understand you had a, on Saturday you had the fastest time. Yep. So how did how did you like running the ARCA car at Daytona? I think just being at Daytona, period. I think is just such a cool thing, and to be there in an ARCA car, I think was even better. So I was really excited about it, and I actually couldn't when I first got on the track. I was just kind of. My jaw dropped just in amazement because I couldn't believe that I was actually at Daytona. You don't really realize it, but um, it was so much fun. I had, it's just indescribable how much fun I had there, but I can't thank Venturini Motorsports for the opportunity, and I can't wait for this upcoming season. That's going to be a big step down from Daytona to going to Decoin to run on the dirt at Decoin in the ARCA car. Yeah, it's going to be quite the difference, but I come from dirt racing, so we kind of wanted to get that one in. Are you going to see if the Venerinis can get you a truck to run at El Duro? Um, we don't really have that on the schedule right now. We haven't really talked about that. I think it would be cool to do because I, I do come from a dirt background, racing dirt since I was 10, but um, we haven't really talked about that. I don't really see that on our schedule. Well, I hear there's going to be a lot of ringers out there. You could be one of them. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool and it'd be a lot of fun to have the trucks on dirt, but that we haven't really that's nothing we haven't really discussed that and I don't really think that's something that we're leaning towards right now. All right, now you're out at the Chili Bowl and there's a lot of big names out there. Have you run into any of them and had had them or talked to them about anything you got going on? Um, I haven't really talked to that many of them. We just everybody just got here. I mean, this is the first couple of nights of Chili Bowl, but um, everybody this morning was all at the ticket for kids for cancer game, so we kind of all got together there and had a lot of fun there, but I haven't really talked to that many of them. Well, you can talk to J.J. Yaley. He was on our show last week. <laughs> he's going to be out there. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> you can go over and talk to him and say, hey, I heard you were on Let's Talk Racing as well. Then you got something in common you can start talking with him about. Yeah, I might have to do that. <laughs> yeah, anything it takes to lead in to get to meet some of these guys, you know? Yeah, anything you can do to get to talk to them and have a conversation. So what do you think your chances are for the Chili Bowl? Um, I think we have pretty good chances. I'm just going to have to work our way up there. and It's a fun week. I think it's just cool to be at the Chili Bowl Period. I mean, it's such a cool experience. I always say everybody's got to experience it at least once. So we're going to have our work cut out for us on Saturday, but we just got to enjoy it while we're here. Now, have you ever met Brad Doty? No. He, he should be out there as well. Um, you'll probably find him hanging around the TV, uh, TV guys. He's uh, been doing some commentary for Speed Channel. I'll have to check that out. You know who Brad Doty is, right? Yeah. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second. It sounded like you didn't say much. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've had uh, we've had quite a few of the guys on the show as well. Swindell, Lasoski. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, oh my God. Uh, one. It was one of the ones that won one of the races out at Knoxville. Um, Shots? Kyle. No, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's been on. Uh, yeah, Shots has been on. Uh, we ha actually we had a really good fun time with his mom out at the mm -hmm. mu the 
Muse- Hall of Fame Museum when we were there. But Kyle, did, Kyle Larson, he didn't he win the didn't he win the, the race last night? Yeah, he won the preliminary night. Yeah, last night. Yeah. yeah. I thought he did. I thought I heard he won the race last night. Somebody, you should have told me that earlier. I could have called him up and had him <laughs> one right after her, and they could have probably talked together. Yeah, Swindell won the race of champions, too. There you go. So what else, What uh, what's coming up for you after the Chili Bowl? Uh, after the Chili Bowl, my next race is in New Smyrna, Florida. Actually, the day after the, the Daytona Arc race, so... My dad and I are going to fly down and support at the Daytona race because I'm not old enough to race yet. And then the next two nights I'm going to be racing my midget in New Smyrna. And after that race, I believe my next race is my first ARCA race at Mobile. Cool. Good deal. You're going to be jet-setting it all over the place. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. That's my life right now. I better get used to flying then. Or have a lot of drama, I mean. (laughs) I don't mind it. I love traveling. I love flying, so it's a perk for me. Well, uh, next time I'm flying, I'll pick you up and take you in my plane. We'll fly, and you might think different. All right. I like to go fast, even in a plane. Well, so do I, so we probably have something in common. (laughs) Whatever floats your boat. All right, do you have any sponsors or anything that's helping you out this year? Um, we're working on some deals right now. We haven't fully closed on them yet, but hopefully we can get some guys that can help us out. But right now we have a lot of product sponsors, FK Rada and Simpson Race Products, Lansing Sanitary Supply, Lucas Oil, yeah, where they all help us out every now and then. So got to thank them. So how can some of the fans get in touch with you, Taylor? Through Facebook or... Um, I have a Facebook fan page, Taylor Ferns. You can follow me on Twitter at Taylor Ferns. I have a website, TaylorFerns.com. Uh-huh. And if anybody wants autographs, like hero cards or whatever, they can email me on my email, Taylor at TaylorFerns.com. So uh-huh. there's a lot of ways you can get in touch with me. Well, good deal. Well, let me let, uh, I'm sure you got some stuff you're going to be doing tonight. We're going to go ahead and let you go. I'd like to thank you for having you on here with us. And we will have you back on again. Now that I finally got your phone number figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, have a good night. Thank you. You too. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What would you do there, Jack? I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the pin exploded. <laughs> Where'd you buy that from? Uh, uh, Toys R Us? I don't know. Uh, my wife got it from somewhere. <laughs> Jeremy Mayfield Motorsports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for being on the show with us tonight. And everybody was out there listening. We had a good time as well. Oh, yeah. Our, our jaw bones and cheeks are probably going to hurt later on from all the laughing. Mm-hmm. And fun. we will be live again next Wednesday night. See you then. Take care. All right, take care. I forgot, i got to do this all this new stuff now. Uh, push the right button. Cue it up. <laughs> oh, boy. It was fun to watch on TV. <laughs> Probably is. I don't like it when we got the little circle thingy going around. That means something's holding up something. Now we're frozen in time. (laughs) You better watch it. You might still be getting recorded. I don't know. Let's see. I sat there and watched it. Like, (laughs) hmm. Smile. They're on candid camera. Sorry, folks, the bar's closed for two weeks. <laughs> there we go. We got a close in on the man wiping his eyes. Hey, guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson, Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peters, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver
driver of the 33 NASCAR late model. 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunter, I'm 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear, Butler Built Seats, Bell Helmets, Hooker Harness Seat Belts, number 94 in South.